Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part four of my constructors tutorial series. I'm going to open up my website to javacjava.com, click on the little menu pop out over here, and select the Java OOP tutorials, so the object oriented programming tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the constructors part four, right? And basically this one is, is about the default constructor. So this tutorial will discuss the default constructor. When we don't declare a constructor in our source code file, the compiler will put in a default no argument constructor for us. It is important to understand that when we declare our own constructor, the default art no argument constructor is no longer created. If we were to code a constructor in a class that is already in use in other source code files, then we will break the code everywhere the object is initialized. A default constructor looks like this. You got your class name, which matches the name of the class, and then you got a no arguments little opening and closing parentheses here. There's nothing inside of that. And in your code block, your open and curly brace, you have this uh, keyword super followed by uh, opening and closing parentheses and then a semicolon. Now don't worry about this yet. I will get into this in a future tutorial and explain exactly what that does. So, but for now, let's come down here and let's go ahead and copy and paste this code. And this exact same piece of code that I used in part two of my encapsulation tutorial, I'm just gonna build on, on some of that there, so. Go start search, type in CMD. Um, that'll open up the command prompt. Start run um, if you're running CMD, if you're running Windows 7 or earlier. Let's go ahead and type in Java C. You should see a bunch of stuff scroll by, but if you don't, go ahead and uh, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You wanna make sure you get that installed and configured properly before you um, continue on with the tutorials. CD backslash is CD is short for change directory. Backslash tells it to go to the root. Then we're going to make a directory called Java. Now I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. We'll change directories to the Java and we'll make a directory called uh, constructor4 and notepad constructor4. Okay. Control V, we'll paste in our stuff, or right click and select paste, whatever your preference is, save. So we have two classes in the source code file, uh, and I did that just so I won't have to swap back there, save a little time on the video there. But, um, so in the box pass, it looks, looks just like what we had there in the encapsulation there. We have our private integers, length, height, and width. These are all of our instance variables here, so they're encapsulated there. And then we've got our setter methods and our getter methods here for the height, width, and length. Um, and then we've got our method that will just calculate the volume and return the calculation of length times height times width back as an int value, right? So that's pretty straightforward there. And then of course, up in the constructor for class here in the main method, we're just simply um, declaring a reference variable B of box data type and we are creating a new object reference um, box. So, and then down here we're do calling the set length, the set height, and the set width with those particular arguments, 10, 2, and 5. And then we're calling the getter um, methods here, right? To get those and print those out. And then the calculate volume method to simply display the volume there. So. Let's go ahead and save this. This is just really a review there. Compile it, run it. <clears throat> okay, so everything it did in the second part of my encapsulation tutorial we're at right now. Now, of course, we are doing constructors, so what if we want to go ahead and add in a constructor here? Now that we've learned about constructors, we can use their cool new features. And I'm just going to cut and paste something from off screen here real quick so you don't have to watch me type it in. All right, so I'm creating a new constructor here um, that will set the, well, it takes three parameters, length param, height param, width param, right? 
and it will set the uh, instance variables length, height, and width equal to length param, height param, width param, right? So this is a, a brand new like shorthand cool way that we just learned to do this stuff, right? We, so we don't have to use the setter and setter methods there to, to initialize, well not initialize, but set the values of length, height, and width on those, okay? So let's go ahead and save this here and come out here and compile it. And whoa, we got an error. Oh no, why? Well, we just broke the code. Now, one of the first things I said in this tutorial basically was that um, when we don't have a constructor in here, right? Java creates a default constructor for us when we compile it, right? Or the Java compiler, I should say, right? So now the second we add a, con a constructor into this class, it no longer creates the default constructor for us, okay? And that's what's happening there. So we actually broke this line of code up here, which is outside of the class that we just modified. So, oh, that could be a problem. What if uh, you're working in a company and, you know, a <clears throat> hundred other programmers are using your box class and you come in here and add this constructor and then all of a sudden they go to compile their, their classes where they're using it and it goes off on an error. You know, you can see that would be a real problem, right? You're gonna get like people coming to your desk and not too happy. Some water there. So how do we how do we fix this this issue but still add the the new functionality of our cool new constructor? Well, what we do is we go ahead and we create a default constructor at the same time we create this one. We don't have to remove the the constructor we just created, right? So I'm gonna go off screen. Cut and paste this in here. So you have to watch me type this. So here's our default constructor. It's really, really simple. Um, box, which matches the class name, right? No arguments. And then our um, opening and closing braces and then this uh, super statement here. So as I said earlier, don't worry about this yet. I'll cover super in future tutorials. So now we have two constructors in here, right? One with three parameters, one with no parameters. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. At least make sure we, um, hey, we can compile it. We no longer get the error anymore, right? Let's just run it here. And we, it still works. So now everything is happy. So, okay. That's great. Now, what if we want to go ahead and create a new, use our new super new constructor? That's that's great. Box x equals new box, and we'll pass it um, five, five, and five. We should end up with a box with 125 for its volume, right? And then we'll just go. Box uh, volume or box x there we go then we'll just display that right so we were still using it up here that's just fine and now we're using it down here as well right Let's go ahead and save this here. And we'll I'll clear our screen here. Then we'll recompile it. Oh, I just tried to do the dot class there. That'll, that ain't, we'll never be able to compile the Java compile bytecode there. Okay, so. Just compiled the source code file again there. And now we'll, uh, we'll do a clear screen and Java, and we'll run it. Okay, so all of our stuff still works up there, and now our box X volume 125 works down there. Okay, so this is, this is basically how you can expand your existing classes that are already in use by, um, you know, if you wanted to add a constructor in there with some parameters, but you didn't want, if but you know it'll break other stuff there, you can go ahead and code the default constructor in there, right? You just have to be aware that um, when you do put a constructor in, that Java will no longer make the default constructor for you. All right. 
and it's perfectly valiant valid well now you can kind of see from the new operator here how it decides um, what to run here because based on the arguments that are passed to the parameters it will choose the appropriate constructor to initialize the box um, object there okay so up here we have no parameters and that'll pick this one down here we have three parameters all of in integer data type there and it'll go ahead and say okay this one matches so let's go ahead and run this one right so that's basically how that works um, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this close out of that I'll just leave you with some final thoughts here um, you just you really want to make it a habit to always write a default no argument constructor whenever you write a constructor that contains parameters in your class so that concludes this tutorial thanks for watching